Hello? What do you think you were doing? You look guilty. Hmm? Crack and I hope you're all having an amazing day and welcome back to the videos uh, where today is honestly just gonna be a chill day since we took the RX-7 out for its first drive it's probably been around about a week or so I have not filmed anything not done anything and I do really apologize for that but unfortunately with the weather that we've had over the last week or so I have literally driven this car once and once only and that was to work which sucks um, we have been absolutely inundated with the rain down there We actually have like a little dam down the very back there And it's like slowly started to build up to the fence line there But it's... anyway, I've just been fixing a few little things on the RX-7 since I last updated you guys one of them was one of the uh, Clear coolant lines. I'll see if I can show you guys Yeah, you guys can see the clear coolant line just down in there. Unfortunately um, that wrapped around and then it was touching a line for the left hand side oil cooler being the RS version this has the twin oil coolers one on each side um, and one of the lines down the back here um, was touching one of the coolant lines nothing bad happened I just noticed that it was um, touching it so so I quickly grabbed a zip tie and zip tied both the lines up I'm just getting ready for work right now but before we head there I have a few little things to talk about with you guys I told you I had more stuff coming I wasn't I wasn't lying we have more stuff on the way for the RX-7 to make this thing just absolutely perfect um, but we have also run into a few small issues. <laughs> right off the bat, the V-mount is 100% working. We have dropped temps so much and I've been basically driving this thing to and from work every now and then and it has been incredible. Uh, one thing I really do want to touch up on though is the tune. I want to make sure we are 100% okay to run at this kit because we do have increased flow through the intercooler and through that grady throttle body elbow. I really want to make sure this is okay so I'm going to see how quickly I can get it booked in but until then we can still drive the car around. I just don't want to boost it up too much. I'm making sure to still hit limiter and still do everything whilst I'm driving the car so don't stress guys we are going to be fixing that so don't stress guys we are not going to have any issues with failing spark plugs and the thing does sound amazing we're still boosting it up we're just not going crazy crazy with the thing now we also have to get some uh, barra turbo spec door stops so we can uh, plug those holes right there so that way we aren't sucking through any air from the hot engine that's unfiltered and not only that but we're still getting a very very small little whine I believe it is a boost leak coming from the throttle body elbow but it could just be um, well it's only happening when we start to get on it just a little bit and I'm thinking it could even even be a whistle from this part here so blocking off that is obviously going to tell us exactly what that issue is but yes we have a small little issue where we're having a nice little wind from something um, and I don't know what it is by the way I just remembered I had a I had a bad dream that I freaking damaged these fins right here <laughs> That's so weird. Anyway, we are having an even larger issue than that though. Of course, I knew these things would come up and this is something I'm going to have to overcome. But, uh, I'm having a few little issues with the twin turbo setup on the FD. Ever since doing the V-mount and driving the car around, I've had a few little issues in regards to something catching on fire in the engine bay. <laughs> no, um, I'm just joking, but um, no, we have had some issues, um, especially just pulling up to stoplights and stuff like that, where I'd be driving and it's completely fine, and then we stop at a set of stoplights and we see like some white smoke. Uh, it's only very thin, but coming through the vents in the bonnet, and it led me to sort of have a look around the car and try and find out what exactly is causing it. It's white, I, I don't believe it's coolant. We've already done a little bit of a pressure test on the system. We found that one of these hoses down here was a little bit loose, so I ended up tightening that one up there. But as soon as it was smoking, I pulled over and I had a look, and it's coming from the front turbo. Um, I don't know if you guys can sort of see this. I'll see if I can put some light on it so that way you guys can all sort of find out. Oh, uh, you can't. You're gonna have to take my word for it, but around that exhaust housing on the front turbo there, there is a little bit of oil buildup. This would have just been getting gradually worse over time. I'm not entirely sure where the oil feed has just come loose or one of the crash washers is gone or I'm not quite sure. But we are having an issue 
with that front turbo somewhere. It is leaking a little bit of oil, and then as soon as it does that, it is basically burning off and then coming through my bonnet, and I freak out every time because you guys all know whenever I see smoke I always stress out. At this current point in time I'm still driving it. Um, I haven't driven it in the last haven't driven it the last two days or so, two, three days. But yes, that front turbo, I'm gonna have to either take off all this piping here and just have a quick little look at it. It potentially even just could be a uh, blow by because I don't have a catch can on this thing, so I'm not entirely sure. Uh, yeah, we, we are unsure at the moment. So I'm gonna get to pulling all this apart in a later video. Um, but today, today is very, very exciting. So I told you guys we had more parts waiting and it's not really a part as such, but it is something that's very, very special that me and Brett from Empire Tinting and Vinyl have been speaking about for a while now. If you guys didn't know, I am now working at Empire Tint and Vinyl and it's been absolutely amazing. But Brett has been pushing me every single day to wrap this thing and make it my own. You guys all know that the silver never really sort of popped to me and it was always the plan to change the color of this car. And so, we have chosen a color and it should be arriving today. Now, if you guys all think that I'm going to be revealing the color, hell no, I'm not gonna be revealing the color to you guys. I put up four options on my personal Facebook page and I think some people will probably know exactly what's coming with this car. There's only, but did I choose the color that I know I'm gonna paint it or did we go something completely different? I'm not quite sure. I mean, I'm sure, but I know you guys aren't quite sure. So yes, in about a week's time, we're gonna be changing up the color of my FD, and it is gonna be amazing. Now, not only that, we're not gonna be doing this typical YouTuber thing where we drop off the car, and they're gonna be wrapping it, and then we're gonna be getting it back within a week. No, we are going on YouTube. So I'm gonna be showing you guys and taking you through the entire process of us wrapping this. Now, I am sorry. I am going to be making the videos in black and white so you guys can watch them all and then we're going to be doing a final reveal once it comes out in the sun because this is going to pop. This is going to be such an incredible looking car. I hope you guys are keen for it. <laughs> it's, it's making me so excited. So yes, we're going to be doing everything in regards to wrapping this thing. It's going to be a pretty difficult car to wrap. Um, in all fairness, I haven't done too much wrapping myself, but the guys that I'm working with have done heaps of wraps. So, so it's going to be a little bit of promotional stuff for them as well. Plus, we get to change the color of this thing from this silver. We get to protect the paint because the paint is actually really good on this car. So yes, it's just going to be all around a good time. Now, a couple of other things I really wanted to show you guys. This is not going to be an easy task by any means. If you guys have a look right, so down the bottom of this side skirt right here, there's a join right there. This piece right here, all over the top of the roof, all the way down, all the way down to there, is one single piece. Now I did ask about this because is there even a piece of vinyl that is big enough to actually be able to do that? Um, Brett said it's gonna work, <laughs> so I'm not quite sure. I am along the ride just like you guys. I've never actually witnessed a car being wrapped before, so this is gonna be quite interesting. The other thing I really wanted to ask you guys is do you think we should keep the carbon look on the bonnet? I think it'd be cool to wrap it the same color as the car, but still leave the original carbon cutout that the Angry Panda Factory bonnet came with. Um, although the whole bonnet is actually carbon, it is yellow underneath, so we can't exactly just take this off and then have a fully exposed carbon. That's why it's carbon wrapped at the moment. And this carbon wrap actually isn't too bad. So I think if we do the rest of the car and then we don't have enough to do to the bonnet because the vinyl that we've chosen is a Nosatec and they don't really include too much vinyl in the kit, we might even just stick with the carbon bonnet look for now. I actually quite, I'm actually digging it and I think with a new color, it's really gonna stand out. But I think if we have just enough color to put on the bonnet, we're probably gonna do that and then just leave these exposed carbon bits right here. I think that'll look really cool. But yes, I think that this is going to be amazing. I'm gonna take you guys to work um, and I think that the color should be showing up today. It didn't come yesterday. I'm pretty sure it should be here today. Now, not only that, but Sarah's also going for eight days, which is sad because she's leaving me to look after this thing. Oh God, you have horrible separation anxiety, don't you? What, me and the dog? <laughs> you and the dog? <laughs>
So another very cool thing about the R33, which is going to be coming in the next few videos, boost gums or uh, ensemble performance. You guys have all known them from the rebuild on the RB25, which has been amazing. He has an NZ wiring trigger kit, which we have for this car right here. So I'm swapping him a straight pipe exhaust and 50 bucks that I got from this car. And so we can finally fix some of the trigger issues that this car is having. If you guys know, we have horrible cold start trigger issues, mainly from that Kaz, I do believe. Um, we've tried a lot of other different things to try and eradicate it, but this is like the last step. And the fact that he has one there in stock is absolutely amazing. Um, he was gonna sponsor it anyway, but it's, uh, yeah, it's just so much. Yeah, if I can help him out and give him a straight pipe, that'd be wicked, so. <laughs> and of course, I'm never gonna use a straight pipe because this is too loud for me anyway, so that's it. Check engine light, it's two weeks strong. Hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful day here in Brisbane at the moment. Things still sounds amazing. <laughs> Alright guys, so we just got to work and there's a few cool little projects going on at the moment. I'll quickly show you this wrap we're currently doing out the back. Yeah, it looks really nice. So we're doing that bike in like a silver and turquoisey kind of chrome, which is pretty cool. And uh, of course, we have Brett's R1 race bike as well. This thing looks absolutely incredible, all stick it up and everything. Absolutely beautiful, but... In terms of wrapping the car. At Empire, one of the things we're very fortunate enough to be able to use is a Nosatec. So a Nosatec is one of the highest quality wraps that you can get in the world. And it is super incredibly glossy. It is one of the glossiest wraps you can possibly get. And it basically mimics paint. There is, I was always completely turned off from wrapping my car any color um, or any other brand until I saw a Nosatec. Um, if you guys remember, Renosatec is actually on Jean's uh, car as well. But if you guys can see, this isn't like a just like a standard color palette. This is like this is the actual wrap itself, and you can even see in that black right there, it is incredibly glossy. That is exactly what goes in the car. So I'll quickly just get all these wraps out so you can see. So you guys can kind of see at the top there, we have your standard like black, white, sandy kind of color. It's a really nice like blood red there as well, which I think is pretty cool. Um, lava orange, probably not that color. Now I was thinking about going this color, but it is like super, super green and on camera it looks green almost, but I can assure you it is just a very bright yellow. Um, then you have the acid green, which would look sick on something like a Porsche or something like that with some curves. Um, going through you have this turquoise dream, kind of like looks exactly like the same color without the, kind of like the same color as the Falcon that I had. Um, without like the metallic all through it. And this is a color that I was really interested in and that's Miami blue. Color looks absolutely amazing, man. <laughs> one day, maybe, I don't know, maybe that'll look good on the R33, I don't know. If this turns out well, we'll probably wrap the 33 at the same time as well. Um, Maritime blue. We also have this Laguna blue. Um, basically matches like a Laguna Seca. Laguna Seca blue in the BMWs. Looks pretty nice. Um, probably like a little bit darker to be honest. Then we get into some of the uh, metallics. So you have the metallic silver right there, uh, which probably you won't see me going because I'm kind of trying to cover up the silver. Metallic rose, color's pretty nice. You have the dandelion yellow right there, which kind of looks like, you know, the stock RX-7 color with a little bit of metallic through it. You also have this, the mamba green, which I think is sick. You have metallic midnight red, which this color looks like soul red. If you guys have seen Gene's car, this is exactly what his car is wrapped in and it looks incredible. You have midnight gold right there. You also have midnight green, midnight blue, and midnight purple. How sick is that? And then after that, you also have the pearlescent colors as well. So these colors right here, mainly just like not metallic but pearl in them so you have the pearl neon mint and the pearl crystal blue crystal blue is another color i was looking at there was one ferrari that's been done in it and it looks amazing so one of those colors right there is the new color of the rx7 so what do you guys reckon and just like clockwork the wrap has just arrived all right so i'm, I'm gonna try not to not to show you guys what the color is right here so let's quickly go black and white beautiful Alrighty, go. Here is the new color. Oh, man, it looks good. It's a lot different looking at it on like a vinyl wrap versus, I don't know, something else, but. Dude, what? That looks so good. What is, oh my god, what's up with my camera? Jeez. 
What's up people of the internet? It is the next day and we're here back with the RX-7. Sorry, probably should have waited to start filming this clip. When the uh... You done? Shit. Um, so yeah, anyway, a, f a whole bunch of stuff has happened in the last few days. So, continuing this video on the next day. So, the wrap came yesterday and it looks amazing. So, uh... So once again, I'm not going to tell you guys exactly what it is, but... Um, yeah, what do you guys reckon would look good on this? It's gonna be amazing. But before we do that, um, I quickly wanted to fix up some of the stuff on the RX-7 because we're gonna be taking it back out again this afternoon. So, um, I ended up grabbing some stuff from Bunnings Warehouse. Now, I know that sounds really stupid, but as a method to my man. Alrighty, -o. can we do this one-handed? No, we cannot. So if you guys remember at the start of the video, I was talking about some of the things in the RX-7 that we needed to fix up. First of all is the intakes. So the intakes have these larger holes right here, which are being cut out, which I'm guessing is for the air pump. I'm not entirely sure, but we need to block them off. So, um, so my inner Falcon owner came out right here. And as you can see, we have a set of 19 mil rubber chair tips. And then also we have a set of 25 mil ones. Now I've already measured these out. This is a 25 mil. That down there is an 18 mil uh, hole. So these rubber chair tips, if you guys don't remember, um, on the Falcons, if you want to have a sick dose on your Falcon, you take off the blower valve and you plug at the intercooler piping on both sides. And then you also uh, plug the vacuum line. So ended up getting some of them. So those are going to plug the holes perfectly. Let's see if I can quickly do it. So this is all they are. They're thick rubber, gonna be perfect for the intake side. So um, yeah, see if they slide on. I don't know if you guys can see, where is it? Ah oh, yes, that pipe right there. Oh mate, what? Look at that, perfect. I will put some hose clamps on them because obviously when the blow valve goes off, it's gonna need it. Oh mate, look at that. I know it looks a bit stupid, but it is definitely gonna stop it. There's nothing else that it's probably gonna look nicer. So quickly get some hose clamps around then. And uh, hopefully that should stop my wheezing uh, intercooler piping. Um, if not, I do believe that it could be this. I will double check, go over all the intercooler piping again. I think I will goop up this, but we'll see how we go. Um, I'll just quickly tighten up everything. We'll take it out for a quick little drive. If it's still doing it, then that is the issue. Beautiful, so I've got two on there at the moment. And once again, they are janky. Once again, I will find a better fix for them, but as for now, this is the cheapest and cleanest solution that I can possibly think of. Um, not only that, uh, but I also have uh, three spares of each, just in case, even though the one on the Falcon lasted for three years and it was for the blower valve, like going under the intercooler piping. So uh, yeah, we have a few spare of them um, and they're like two bucks. So we'll put this into my drawer of things. Beautiful. All right, now also during this video, I really want to try and diagnose what this issue is in terms of the smoke that's coming out from around the uh, turbo. Um, I am almost 100% certain I know what it is, and it's basically just, and it is on the top of the turbo, there's just a whole bunch of oil on there, and I don't know how the oil's got there. Um, so the only way to find out would, would be to take off both the intakes, the intercooler piping right there, take the whole lot off and see if I can get to the top of that turbo there and um, just have a good look around and see if I can find anything that's leaking. So uh, I'll have a little look down there with a the light right now, see if I can see anything. We might take it out for a little bit of a drive and see if we can make it and see if we can replicate the issue. Um, but yeah, all in the means of testing. Alrighty, so I've also just found another potential issue. Um, don't know if you guys were able to see this before, but the cinder cooler piping wasn't sitting on there properly. As it turns out, my hose clamp was a little bit too far up and the pipe was too far forward um, that it was actually not sealing here. So when it was boosting up, there could have been a slight... Um, actually, it's probably the, the best case scenario is there might have been like a slight boost leak there. So we'll, uh, we'll fix up that pipe right there, make sure that's all sitting properly, and then we'll tighten that back down and uh, we'll sit a whole lot nicer as well. But I believe that also could have been an issue, so we'll quickly fix that also. Alrighty, so I've cleaned up all the intercooler piping that's currently on the car, and uh, it definitely looks like it seals a whole lot nicer now, and we won't have any weird sort of issues. So I guess the only thing is to start her up, take it for a little bit of a rip around the block, and see if we can get it to recreate the issue now. Um, I have a feeling that it's going to be a lot nicer to drive now. Um, I know that on the last drive it started to be a little bit weird in terms of like hiccuping and doing weird stuff. So a boost or vacuum leak could definitely be a big cause in that. So uh, yeah, we'll have a little bit of a play around, take it out for a little bit of a drive and I'll bring you guys along.
We also have to do some work to the skyline this coming weekend. So, hell yeah, we gotta do some uh, some clearance in for those front wheels there. Oh, yeah, they're so meaty. Yeah. So already I can tell that the throttle response is a lot nicer. Just even like just flipping the throttle is already like insanely better than when I was doing it the other day. So uh, yeah, be nice. Also, it's a fairly hot day. So even just cruising around right now, uh, by blocking off those two uh, little entries, by blocking off those two little pipes for the intake, it's nowhere near as like spooly now. Like, sorry, the noise. I shouldn't say mechanically spooly. I don't even know what I'm talking about. You can't hear it as much at all. So, um, I don't know if you guys could hear it in the last video, but oh, it's pretty spooly still. For stock turbos, it's pretty good. Already, it is driving so much nicer. So I don't know if how well you guys can see, but there is a little bit of smoke coming out from the top of that turbo there. So, um, there is a fair bit of residual oil that's sitting around there and I haven't touched anything to do with the turbo. So, I'm thinking that we'll let it cool down, we'll pull everything off and see if we can determine exactly where that oil is coming from down there. Um, but apart from that, it drives great. Um, so yeah, just got to make sure that everything's all good. Definitely fix that noise a little bit, but it started to come back a lot worse. So, um, but it started to come back against the end of it. So I'm thinking it could be something towards a turbo, but we are going to be changing it out with a single turbo kit in the future. So I'm okay with that. It's such a beautiful car though. Hell yeah. Yeah, and first of all, I'm not trying to be someone I'm not But there's plenty different ways for you to go and get your props You don't need to try pretending living lifestyles you ain't got That's that shit I told myself when I was low and feeling lost Learning lessons, pay the cost, while they watching you go